So we are looking at the last section in chapter six today. We will be halfway through the material for test two on this. We've got these four sections out of chapter six and then four sections out of chapter eight will be the material that's on test two. Um, next class, so on Thursday, we're gonna have a really short lecture about chapter seven. Um, but it'll be really short. Um, just because we use the stuff out of chapter seven as we go on in chapter eight and chapter ten, and but we don't necessarily have to have to go into a lot of detail in chapter seven. Okay, and so what we'll do is we'll have a really short lecture Thursday, and then we've got an activity we'll do. Okay. So we'll do do a really short lecture and an activity. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see, anybody have any just general questions or anything before we get into six four? Can't think of anything. Okay. All right. So we're still working with our normal distribution tables um, in this section. Okay. This time we're using them differently. Okay. Um, our textbook calls this section finding values of a normally distributed random variable. Um, a lot of textbooks will call this section the inverse normal distribution. So that's a pretty common name for this material as well. Um, and you'll see why um, we would call it the inverse normal in uh, just a minute. Because what we're going to do is we're going to still be using our Z tables. Okay, but instead of being given a z value and told to find the area, okay, we're going to be working problems the other way around. We're going to be given an area and be told to find the matching z value. Okay. So we're going to have to do things inside out. Okay, is what we're doing. Okay, so um, got a couple little things here, especially on these. Okay, it's a good idea on any of these. Um, area under the curve problems, but especially on these, if you're not not sure, okay, if you're working the problem right, it can really kind of be a sanity check. Okay, if you draw a little sketch and see if it makes sense. Okay, so just keep that in mind, and then we're going to have a sketch for all the ones that we do together. But um, sometimes people don't want to take the time to do that on their own, and I get that. Okay. And then. The thing we really have to pay attention to in this section, um, these are not hard problems. What happens is you get mixed up on which type of problem you're trying to do. So we really got to pay attention to what the problem is asking for. Okay? So in this section, um, it's going to be asking for a z-score. Okay? Asking for a z-score. So if it gives you an area, and your answer is supposed to be a z-score or standard score, okay? then that's where we're going to do what we're going to do today, and we're going to read the table inside out. We're going to read the table from the inside out. Okay? So just take careful note of that as we go along. Okay, so we already know how to read the tables. We're just using them differently. We're just kind of reading them backwards, so um, inside out, really. So let's look at the problem and then we can go ahead and start talking about how to how to do these. Okay. All right, so the types of problems we're concerned with in this section are ones like this. This one says what z value has an area of 0.7357 to its left. Okay. So this is different than the problems we did in 6.2. In section 6.2, it would give us a z value and ask us what the area to its left was. Okay. So this is the opposite situation, um, and our answer needs to be a z value. Okay. So let's make a little sketch and to see what we're looking for here. So this is saying that on our normal distribution, there's some z value, and the area underneath the curve to its left. Point seven three five seven. 
and we want to figure out the z value. So we're looking, looking for the z here. Okay. So the way we can do that, okay, since it's area to the left, okay, we kind of can use the same rules we've already picked up reading our z tables. We know our tables give us area to the left. That's what the numbers inside the table gives us. So what we're going to do is we're going to scan the inside values, okay, inside the table, and we're looking for 0.7357. And if you want to, you can think about um, my area is bigger than 0.5, so it's going to be on the positive side. You don't have to think about that if you don't want to. Um, you can just look for it on one side, and if those numbers are not working, flip the page over. Okay, it's not, not that big of a deal. Okay, but you can help yourself a little bit there. So we're scanning down through the inside numbers, okay, looking for 0.7357. Yeah, so one, once we find it, okay, and we're going to scan down through there, and should find it in there. It may take you a minute, okay? It's take a little bit of practice to get um, comfortable with. But once we find it, 0 0.7357, then we just read outside, okay? We get the Z value. So here our Z value is 0 0.6, our first two digits. And then our last digit is three, so 0 0.63. That's it. We're just kind of using our tables in reverse here. So if I go back, I can fill in my picture now. The Z value is 0 0.63. That was the Z value I was looking for. Okay. Any questions on what we did on that one? Got the idea down? That's the, that's the first big step. You got to get the general idea of we're given an area and we're looking for a Z value, and then we can talk about how to do the different types of problems. So, yes. Yes. I think I got one more left up here. I think some of them have wandered off. So. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Right. Need to make a few more copies. Uh -huh. Anything else on that one? Okay with it? Okay. Um, I did lead the stuff on this problem in here. Is anybody actually using a TI-83 or 84 to do just a couple of you? Okay, so I'll, good. I'll leave it in the slides then. And that way you can, it'll be there if you want to want to use it. Okay, if you are using TI-83 or 84 here, um, it's a different function in there. You're going to use the inverse normal instead of the normal CDF. Okay. Those instructions are in there. Okay. So let's look at another one of these. Okay. Sometimes they can be worded a little differently. I got a little bit of vocabulary review on this one. This one says, what Z value represents the 90th percentile? Okay. So, what does percentile mean as far as area under the curve? Remember? It tells us something about 90% of the area, but we just got to know where that 90% of the area would be located compared to our Z. Anybody remember? Let's make our sketch. Okay, let me make it a little easier. Would 90th percentile be over here somewhere, or would it be over here somewhere? Left or right? Yeah, so our Z is going to be over here somewhere. Because 90th percentile, that means that 90% of our area, it's a bad arrow, 90% of our area is to that Z value's left, or the way it's going to be in our tables is point 
nine zero 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 is what we're looking for. Okay. So this is just another way to word that that area is to the left of our z value. Okay. So same idea as on the last one. Okay. We're going to look inside of our tables for point nine zero zero zero. But if you scan down through the tables, looking for point nine zero 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 inside, right? anybody see a, an issue with that? It's not there. Okay. It's not there. So, in that case, okay, we're what we're doing is we're estimating a little bit because we're using tables, okay? so we don't have every possible z value listed. So what we're going to do is if the area we're looking for is not in there exactly, we just get as close as we can get. Okay? It doesn't matter if it's a little too big or a little too small, just it's as close as we can get. Okay, so on this one, we're trying to get to point nine zero zero zero. So if we scan down through the areas in the table, we've got a couple that are close. Okay? We've got point eight nine nine seven. That's a little too small. We got 0 0.9015, that's a little too big. But like if you're looking at the last digits, right, this is only three ten thousandths away, or I just think about it, it's just three away. Right? It's three too small. This one's 15 too big. Okay? So this one's a little closer. So that's the one we would go with, just get as close as we could get. So if we do that, then what's our Z value? It'll be 1.2. Point two eight. So our z value that is at the 90th percentile is pretty much 1.28. It's real close. Okay. It's as close as we can get with our tables. So. Okay. It's really like 1.28 something, some other digit. Okay. Um, but using tables, we're just going to get as close as we can get. Questions on that one? Okay. So both of those were area to the left, but we we had two situations. If it's in there exactly, that's the ZVA. If it's not in there exactly, just get as close as you can get. Okay. Well, let's look at another one. Look at this one. This one, again, keep in mind how we know we're doing this process is it asks us for a Z value. So this one says, what Z value has an area of 0 0.0096 to its right? So we've got some Z. And we're told the area to its right. 0 0.0096. A couple of ways we can go about this one. Anybody have any ideas? What could we do? You, you definitely could. Okay, so we know the whole thing is one. So if we do, let me get a different color here. If we do one minus. 0 0.0096. That'll tell us the area to the left. Okay, so our area to the left is 0 0.9904. And we could look that number up in the table inside and find our Z value. So no problem there, that's how the textbook does it on this one. Okay, so if we look for 0 0.9904 in our tables, we scan down through there. Well, it's actually in there, 0 0.9904. Okay, so our Z value there is 2.34, yeah, 2.34. That definitely works.
If you're happy with that, that's fine. Do it that way. Again, that's how our textbook does it. I'm surprised that our text doesn't give us options on this one. There is another way to do it. You may think of another way. So that one used the fact that we know the total area under the curve is one. We could also do it using the symmetry. What could we do? Well, we're given the, yeah, so we don't know this yet, right? But we're given this. So what you can do right, is you can look this number up. And if you go to the tables and you look for an area of 0 0.0096, that'll be over here. And it'll give you negative 2.34. And you can remember that right means opposite, so we got to do the positive. Either way, either way is okay. Either one is fine. Questions on that one? Either method? Okay. All right. Let's look at our next one here. Let's see what we got next. Okay. Let's look at this one. Right. This one says find the value of z such that the area between negative z and z is 0 0.90. Okay, so if we make a little sketch, it says we've got a z value and a negative z value. And so if this one's z, this one's negative z, that's telling us these are opposites, right? Whatever this number is, this is just the negative version, right? And what we're looking for is we want to find the z value that makes it where the area between these two z's is 0 0.90. Oh, yeah, or the way it'll be in our tables, 0 0.9000. We want to find our z value there. So this one, we got to do a little bit more work. We can't look this up in the table because our table doesn't give us area in between anything. Okay. What can we do? You may have any ideas? Is there any way we can... Well, if we were doing it the other way around, right, if it said um, find the area between these two z values, then yeah, you would look them both up and subtract. Okay. But here we're working from the other end of the problem. Egg okay, is giving us the area. Okay, so think about this. Um, this area doesn't help us because it's in between two z's, but is there any way we could figure out the tails? What could we do? Yeah, and the reason why we can do that, we can subtract from one right, to figure out the area in the tails. And the reason why we can do that, well, on this part, it's not, never mind. On this part, it's no big deal. We know the whole area is one. Right, so we can do one minus the area in the middle. That'll give us 0 0.1 or 0 0.1000 zero, 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 if you want to write down the zeros. And where is this area at now? So 0.9 is in the middle, and 0.1 is in both of these tails together. Right. It's the total of the two tails. Okay. That's still not super helpful for us looking it up in the table. What would be better is if we could figure out how much area was just in one tail. 
how can we, how can we do that? We can divide by two, and the reason why that works, this is the part I was thinking about before. The reason why that works is because these areas have to be the same as each other because these two z values are symmetric, they're opposites. Okay, and our curve's symmetric, so the area in this tail has to be the same as the area in this tail. It's evenly split, so we can just take this area in both tails and divide it by two. Okay. They will be on these, there's no way to, yeah. Yeah, if, they're, if the Z's are not symmetric, there's no, we, we don't have a way of finding them. Because there would actually be multiple answers. So that area is our area in each tail, 0 0.05. So now we can look for either one. The left one's a little easier to look for because if we just look for 0 0.0500, Right. inside of our tables and on this one we even have one more issue we have to overcome because if you're looking for an area of 0 0.0500 in the tables anybody ran into the issue yet it, yeah it's not it's not in there exactly so our rule of thumb says we would get as close as we can, but what happens? We got two that are close. Uh, let's look at it. Yeah, I'll put it up here. We got two that are close. There's point zero four nine five. Right, that's like five ten thousandths too small. We got point zero five zero five. That's like five too big. So our rule of thumb says we pick whichever one's closer, but on this one, they're exactly the same distance away from where we want to be. It doesn't happen much, okay, but there are a couple places in the table where this can happen. So this is a special situation. In this situation, what we do is we want to find the Z value that's exactly between these two Z values. So this one, right, 0 0.0495, is negative 1.65. This one, the area that's a little too big, is negative 1.64. We want to find the middle between these, so what we're going to do is we're going to add them together and divide by two. And this is one situation where we'll actually use three decimal places, and because this comes out to negative 1.645. And the only reason why we went to all that trouble, okay, was because the the area we wanted was exactly between these two areas. So we wanted the Z that was exactly between the two Zs. Again, that doesn't happen often, but it does happen a few places on the table. And this is a famous one that comes up over and over again. I say famous, it's a useful one that comes up over and over again. So, What's that tell us? If we go back to our picture, which one do we just find? We found the one on the left. We found the negative. And so we found that this one is negative 1.645. So the one on the other side, that'll be positive 1.645. And then one other thing to mention on this one, because are there so much in this one problem? And one other thing to mention on this one, Hawks is really ticky about ones like this. Okay. Um, because of how the problem's worded, the problem says find the value of Z. So it's only gonna give you one answer box, and it wants the positive one, because it says Z, not negative Z. Okay. I don't know why they're so, why it's so picky on these. But if you have two Z values, the one it's gonna want you to enter is the positive one. Take, take note of that. 
So to answer the question, we've got two Z values, but in hogs, we're just gonna put in 1.645. So a lot going on on that one. Do we need to walk back through any part of it? Let me know. Nothing? You feel good on doing the 1.645 part and all that? Just checking. Thing. All right, let's look at another one then. This one's a little bit different. This one's actually a little easier. This one says find the value of z such that the area to the left of negative z plus the area to the right of z is 0.1616. So if we make our sketch, this is saying we've got two z values again, positive z and negative z, they're opposites. But this time we're taking the area to the left of negative z, so this area, in the area to the right of positive z, so this area. And if we add those up, it tells us we get 0.1616. So it's saying if we take both of these and put them together, 0.1616. And we wanna find the z's. So this one is really just one step less than the last one because we already know the area in the two tails. We know our z's are symmetric. So if we want to figure out how much area is in one tail, what do we do last time? We just divide by two. Because it's got to be evenly split between the two tails. So the area in one tail, 0 0.0808. And it doesn't matter which tail you're thinking about, they're both the same. So the one that's a little bit easier to find in our tables, we can just look up 0 .0808 inside the table. I think this one is in there exactly. So if we go look in, yeah. That area that is in there, 0 0.0808. That gives us a Z value of negative 1.40. Okay. So since that one's negative, that's the one on the left. Right. So this one over here, negative 1.40. That means the one on the right side is positive 1.40. And when we're typing our answer into Hawks, we're going to put in the positive answer, 1.40. Questions on that one? A little bit, a little bit less work than the last one, luckily. That last one was really as bad as they get. No questions on that one? You don't have a lot of questions today. All right, so kind of like we did finding areas under the curve. Um, why do we care? How, how is this useful? Um, it's useful because we can have some normal distribution, okay? not necessarily the standard normal distribution, just some data that's normally distributed, and we can know something about the area under the curve. Okay? And what we can do is we can use our information about the area under the curve to find a data value okay? that we want to know about. Um, not necessarily a Z, but we do it 
okay, by using the standard normal distribution, and then we're gonna kind of use our formula backward okay, to change it back into a data value. Okay, so let's that'll make more sense when we have an example. So let's let's look at this one. Okay. Let's look at this problem. And says at his most recent well-being checkup, Ethan's doctor told him that for his age, his cholesterol level was in a good range at the 60th percentile. Assume cholesterol levels are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 189.1 and a standard deviation of 37.8 for Ethan's age group. We want to know what was Ethan's cholesterol level. So a cholesterol level, that's not going to be a Z, but we are going to use our normal distribution. We are going to use the Z tables in there because we know the data is, data is normally distributed. So on these types of problems, where our answer needs to be some type of data value, like here our answer is a cholesterol level, it could be anything that's normally distributed then these, these are like two-part problems. Okay? So part number one is we want to find the Z value that matches up with the data value we're looking for. So what do we know about his cholesterol level? We'll go back to the beginning. It says it was in a good range at the yeah, 60th percentile. So what we want to do here is we want to find the Z value that is at the 60th percentile. And that's our first step. So we, again, we have to remember what percentile means about area under the curve. And that's saying that we want to find the Z value that has 60% of the area, or 0.6, of the area to its left. Okay. So that's what we're looking for first. We're looking for the Z value that's at the 60th percentile, and then we're gonna use our other information to change that to a cholesterol level. Right. So step one, we're gonna to go to our tables, look inside the tables for 0.6 or 0 0.6000. Okay. Let's see if I've got the tables in here. No yeah, so that one's not in there exactly. But we've got a couple that are closed, 0.5987 and 0 0.6026. The one that's the closest to where we want to be, 0.5987. Does that make sense what I mean when I say we want to get as close to what we're looking for as we can? Like how this one is like 13 too small, and this one's 26 too big, so this one's closer. So what's our Z value here? It's 0 0.25. That's our first step, finding that Z, 0 0.25. And that's the hardest step. Step one we've got. Our Z is 0 0.25. Now if we look at the other information we're given in the problem, what else do we know? We know the mean of this normal distribution, 189.1, and we know the standard deviation of this normal distribution, that's 37.8. And then now we know a Z value, and we're looking for an X. Okay. We already have a formula that has all those variables in it. Okay. So our formula we've been using is this, Z equals X minus mu over sigma. Okay. And we use that to find a Z value when we knew X, mu, and sigma. Okay. But this time we're looking for X, but we know Z, mu, and sigma. Okay. So we can rearrange. We can solve that for x, and you won't have to. I'll have it on the formula sheet solved for x, but if you do, we multiply both sides by sigma and then add mu to both sides. 
So we end up with Z times sigma plus mu. So if we know Z, sigma, and mu, we can find our data value. In this case, we can find our cholesterol level. So we're just going to plug into that. Um, so our Z we found was 0 0.25. The standard deviation, what was it? Uh, was 37.8. Okay, so times 37.8. Plus the mean, which was 189.1, plus 189.1, and that'll give us the cholesterol level we're looking for here. So 0 0.25 times 37.8 plus 189.1. Okay. So here, we get 198.55. It doesn't tell us how to round. That's our person's cholesterol level on this one. What was their name? I forget. Ethan's cholesterol level. One, about 198. We round to a whole number, about 199. Questions on that? Which is kind of odd to me. The doctor said that was a good cholesterol level. Um, you're all yelling, so you might not even know. But what's what's a norm, what, what do you want your total cholesterol level to be below? You may know. Generally, you want it to be below 200. So he's like borderline. He's at 199. His doctor said to me he's doing a good job. So kind of. Kind of interesting. Hmm? Questions on that one? We had a lot going on. So I'm walking back, walking back through it anyway, sorry. Okay. So if we were looking for a cholesterol level. We don't have tables that tell us cholesterol levels. Okay. Um, but what we do know is that it's normally distributed. So we can use our normal distribution tables to find a Z value that matches up with what we're looking for. And our data value that we're looking for, we were told is at the 60th percentile. So that means 60% or 0.6 of the area is gonna be to the left. So when we read our tables inside out and find our Z, we got 0, <coughs> 0 0.25. So then we can use that Z value along with the mean and the standard deviation of this normal distribution with our formula slightly rearranged to solve for our X value, which in this case is a cholesterol level. And we got 199. Okay. No questions on that one? Quiet, don't have questions. I'm not. Some teachers might like just pontificating and talking up here, but I'd like a little interaction. So if you have a question, let me know. All right, uh, one more here. There's our formula again. We see. Okay. All right, this one says, let's assume that the lengths of newborn full-term babies in the United States are normally distributed with a mean length of 20 inches, a standard deviation of 1.2 inches. What's the minimum length that a baby could be and still have a length that is amongst the top 25% of baby lengths? Okay. So our answer is going to be a length. Okay. So that's going to be an X. We're told our data is normally distributed, so we know we can use our Z table somehow. So what we want to do is we want to find the Z 
that matches up with this length we're looking for. And then we can use our formula along with the mean and the standard deviation to come up with our final answer. Okay, we'll get our final length. Okay, so what information do we have about our, our length that we're looking for? Is that we want, we want the minimum that is still considered in the top 25%. So what does that mean about area under the curve? We're going to have 25% of the area, which way? Percentile means area to the left. Yeah, so if you say top percentage, that means we're going to have that area to the right. So 25% or 0.25, or if you want to add zeros, 0.2500. Zero, zero. Because anything from here or bigger, right, would be in the top 25%. So we're looking for the minimum, so we're looking for the one that's right at the top 25%. Okay. So we want the Z value that has an area of 0.25 to its right. How can we figure that out? Yeah, that works. Okay, we know the whole thing's one. So that's one way we can do it. We can do 1 minus 0.25. Figure out the area to the left. 0 0.75 or 0.7500. That's the area over here on the left side. Okay. So another way this could be worded, right? We, this Z value, we can either say it's at the top 25% or it's at the 75th percentile. They mean the same thing. So then, looking for the Z, um, we're going to look for a Z value that has an area of 0 0.7500 to its left. So we're looking for 0 0.7500 inside of our tables. Um, again, that one's not in there exactly. We'll just get as close as we can get. Yeah, so... We've got two that are they're really close to each other, okay, as far as how far away they are from what we want. We've got 0.7486, that's 14 too small. 0.7517, that's 17 too big. So the one that's a little bit closer is 0.7486. So that's a Z value of 0 0.67. Okay. So that's our Z. That's the hard part of this problem over. 0 0.67. Okay. And now what? That's not what our answer needs to be. Our answer needs to be a baby length. So what was our second step? You remember? Yeah, that formula. Yeah, 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 I see it. So if we look back at our problem, we look at what information we're given about our distribution. It says the mean is 20. Standard deviation is 1.2. So we use those two numbers along with our Z. We can figure out our baby length. Okay. So X, our baby length, is going to be our Z value, 0 0.67 times the standard deviation, which was 1.2, plus the mean, which was 20.0. So let's see what we get there. 0 0.67 times 1.2 plus 20. So there I get 20.804. Uh, did it tell us how to round? It said around to one decimal place, so 20.8 inches. Anything smaller than that would be outside of the top 25%. Anything bigger than that would be in the top 25%. Don't any part of that one? No? Sure. 
Sure. Okay. That's it. That's the end of chapter six. Okay. Um, the short section, but I don't like throwing it in with any other sections in chapter six because it gets confusing. So get a short day today. Um, if you will, yeah, just remember to drop your tables off up here as you go. And if you didn't get on the sign-in sheet, I'll bring that up front. Let's see here.